The privateers of the Penda Point series, like Mark Hall of the Executioner and the husband and wife team of Mike and Pam Botters. Teams that have toyed with some success, but racing on a grand scale is tough when the size of your budget is miniature compared to others. Running on a shoestring. Many coming through these gates today may have also walked a similar mile. But when battling uphill, success is measured in the attempt. And pride is the badge of victory. This is Trucks and Tractor Power featuring the best in MTRA Monster Truck Racing. Today, it's the Monster Truck Thunder Drag from the Canfield Fairgrounds in Canfield, Ohio. This is race number eight on the Penda Point Series. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Lee, and welcome to Trucks and Tractor Power on the Nashville Network. The last time here in Canfield a year ago was a big weekend for Gene Patterson in Bigfoot. The Ford won two races. However, Barefoot, the Dodge with Fred Schaefer, also won a race. But so far this season, Fred is winless. Could tonight be the night? Here with more on the Barefoot Dodge is Army Armstrong. At the beginning of the year, Gary, everybody was keeping an eye on the big bear, the grizzly, the barefoot truck of Fred Schaefer. Everybody said he was going to be the guy to beat, but it hasn't turned out that way. As a matter of fact, a lot of people have been saying the old bear's been hibernating. Well, winter may be over, because Fred Schaefer and Barefoot seem to have found the combination they've lost all year long. And really, if they're going to win the championship, they've got to turn the luck around starting now. They can't wait any longer. We're halfway through the season. Schaefer has got to go after brass. Well... You're going to get to see it because in the next round, Schaefer in barefoot is going after Andy Brass and Bigfoot. For all intents and purposes, this one run, the next run between these two, could decide the national championship. Back to you, Gary. Well, Fred Schaefer will have to defeat Dan Runte and Andy Brass every chance he gets because right now he is third in the point standings. They're the top five current standings after seven of the 13 events. And here is a look at your fast qualifier today. This is Colt Cobra. And he had a clocking of 5.37 in the Ford. And look at the air, a tough landing right there for your fast qualifier. Now, Dan Patrick, the only Chevrolet to really be able to flex his muscle this year. Patrick, a professional racer, decided he's going to step up and run with these guys. But in order to do it, you got to attack the track. And that run shows us he's not afraid to go after the throat. Rough landing, but a good run. Now, once again, we show you some highlights from round one. Dan Patrick and Fred Schaefer. Fred in the far lane, and the barefoot Dodge just does eke out the victory over Dan Patrick. Barefoot, a 5.38 ET. Yeah, but Dan Patrick with a 5.41 can still be a player to get back into the loser bracket, Gary. Well, Gary Porter made a quick exit. He got knocked out in the first round by Andy Brass. Now, Brass in a 5.13, setting up the matchup with Fred Schaefer that Army told you about at the beginning of the show. There's Brass's 5.13. 13. And also in round one, it was Colt Cobra against Don Van Lu. Van Lu still trying to get the handle on that Arizona Sports Shirt. Chevrolet just not going to be the player. They're, everybody's landing different. You know what I'm saying? Watch these trucks. Nobody is doing things like the other guy. Mark Hall in the executioner has not made it into round two very often this year, but in a mild upset. He would advance with Ray Porkowski going out of bounds. I'll tell you what, Mark Hall and his brother are good monster truck people. They just need one thing. All racers need it at one time or another. They just need to get a good break. Here's a gal that needs a good break. We talked about the privateers earlier in the show. Here's Pam Botters in the boogie van. She pulls up against the very well-financed Power Wheel Bigfoot as Gary Celine looks on as they drive away from you. The Bigfoot crew looking on because they know if this young lady can step up and run with anybody anytime. They will not roll over for it. 512, best run so far of the night, turned in by Dan Runte. We'll get Army something to eat. Come back and serve up round two from Canfield. Stay with us. Thanks, Gary. Welcome back to the Canfield Fairgrounds here in Canfield, Ohio, in the Penda Thunder Drags. Let's check in with Army now down trackside on the track conditions. Okay, what we're looking at is the starting line area, and there's parity here. All the drivers seem to like both lanes. We don't have a good lane or a bad lane here. As a matter of fact, I'm standing on the first set of cars that they're jumping or rolling, and none of the drivers are having a bit of problem here. They say it's smooth sailing. As a matter of fact, in no man's land, the area between the two jumps, 
same, same. Everybody's having a good time. But the big difference, the playground, as the driver calls it, is after the second jump. That's where all the trucks are really starting to twist and shout when they get up in the air. Back to you, Gary. <laughs> twist and shout. They're rock and rolling. That's about <laughs> as rock and roll as you're going to get, Gary. Samson takes on Snake Bite, Barefoot, Bigfoot Cruiser, and Executioner and the Power Wheels Bigfoot. Now we are into round two competition and two of the more colorful fiberglass creations ever to find their way onto four wheels, Snake Bite and Samson. There Chevrolet is, against Ford. There is a common denominator here. Both of these bodies were designed and built in Winsville, Missouri at GTS Fiberglass. Quality there work. is Colt Cobra in Snake Bite and uh, there is Dan Patrick in Sampson, Dan builds a lot of these chassis. Did he build the snake bite chassis? No, but he was involved in the development of the chassis, you know, two and three years prior to that. Patrick kind of looked like a college professor there, those glasses. Let's go race. A number of these trucks are utilizing Dan Patrick built chassis. Right. Exactly. All right, the first pairing now in round two competition. Snake bite a little late to stage on the throttle, and it's going to be. Snake bite. Colt Ford. Cobra. Whoa, Patrick almost high sides, puts it back down. Colt Cobra with a 521. That was some of the best driving, as we always indicate. If you look at Dan Patrick's 534, some of the best drivings in the shutdown area. Dan exactly. got in trouble and drove out of it. Exactly, but you got to remember on a four wheel drive vehicle, if you can get one tire to touch something, it'll help pull you back straight most of the time. Yeah, and keep your foot in it. When you get high sided, don't let out of the throttle. Keep your foot in it and drive through it. That's exactly what he did. Let's go down to the track now and visit with Colt Cobra. I tell you what, Colt, it's amazing that how close the competition is here tonight. Yeah, that's right, Army. This year, everybody's coming on strong. As you saw, the American Gladiator, new guy this year, coming on strong, ran the first four-second uh, pass this year earlier. I knew I had to be strong out here. I'm doing the best we can. We came out on top. We're looking for the next round. Whoever it is, we're going to get them. As we have documented before, it is now do or die time for Fred Schaefer. He needs to knock out Andy Brass and, of course, Dan Runty every chance. He's given a chance right now as he'll stage against the big blue Ford of Andy Brass. Bigfoot against the barefoot Dodge. You know, two of the old war horses go against each other here, and it's kind of ironic because Andy Brass, your current national points leader, the rumor mill has him maybe leaving monster trucks and going over to NAS truck race. We'll keep our eye on him. Fred Schaefer, he's already been in another sport. He comes from the sport of drag racing. Schaefer makes plenty of horsepower. The problem seems to be in the chassis design on that Dodge truck. Meanwhile, the Ford guys, they have got a lock on the chassis. Everything they seem to do is working on the blue side of the slate, on the red side of the slate. Everything they seem to do jumps back in their face and shoots them in the foot or something. Well, Fred Schaefer trying to gain some points in this season-long championship. It is still door handle to door handle, and who won it? Oh, that was too close to call visually. They're still Andy racing. Brass, a 5.38. Let's get the time on Fred Schaefer as Brass stops. Yes, Fred Schaefer does it. 5.35. That's exactly what he had to do, man. The pressure was on both of them. You talk about a good, clean race. Just kick back and watch it. The light goes green. They go to the other end. No man's land. They settle down, make horsepower, pull a trigger, and fly to the finish line. And it's a DODGE oh. night. Watch again. Andy Brass has a very rough landing. This is a pulling track. There's a ledge right there, and he gets off that ledge. See, right there, and has difficulty hanging on. But Fred Schaefer has to be extremely happy. He's down there with Army Armstrong. Well, the big story has been barefoot coming out of hibernation. I believe you may have turned the corner, Fred. Army, uh, after last weekend, we turned every bolt nut on this truck because uh, we're going to do it one way or the other. So could this be Fred Schaefer's night in the barefoot Dodge? As competition continues, another Ford. That's the uh, Bigfoot Power Wheels. Now, Schaefer has knocked one big foot out tonight, but he's still got this guy in front of him tonight and in a points chase. But what you're looking at right now is one of the guys I'm glad to see in this round of competition finally given a chance to get some national exposure to the Hall Brother Racing Team. The national exposure goes to their sponsors. Well, Mark Hall, of course, will be in the Executioner as we take a look at Dan Runte out of St. Louis, Missouri, in the Power Wheels Bigfoot. He is second right now in the point standings. Mark Hall out of Champaign, Illinois, in the Executioner. 
And uh, you, perhaps you noticed earlier the Spies Hecker on the front fender. That is a German auto finish. It's a, it's a German paint product that we're seeing show up more and more as a sponsor in American motorsports. Yeah, we're glad to see them working with the Hall brothers and helping them out. But right now, believe me, this Chevrolet team, uh, Champaign, Illinois, has got their hands full of that big blue oval bunch Ford over there. They leave the line together. Bigfoot's out on him. Bigfoot yeah, there was away. never a doubt. Never, never in question there. Dan Runte, there's Executioner's 5.54. Five, but Runte ran a 5.11. Boy, 5.11 is a number, believe me. We're going to be seeing more of that Executioner truck. They're working their way into the program. They qualified for every race all year, Gary. So Runte finds himself in the semis. Another good look at Runte and the Power Wheels Bigfoot. We're coming back. Stay with us. Welcome back to Canfield, Ohio. Fred Schaefer, the Barefoot Dodds, getting ready for his run in the semifinals as we will show you now our pairings for the semis here in Canfield. Now, once again, Barefoot knocked out Bigfoot. He goes to the top bracket against Snakebite. Sampson, the fast loser with Dan Patrick, will then take on the Power Wheels Bigfoot. So the scenario bounces back. We're down to four vehicles. We've got one Chevy, one Ford. One Dodge, one Ford. You know, We've been here before. And look at the position of Fred Schaefer in the cockpit. These new trucks have the drivers, just like Colt Cobra, right in the middle of the truck. Gary, you're exactly right. Even though these monster trucks weigh 10,000 pounds, the position of the driver is so important because, as we saw earlier, when Andy Brass landed, you not only go left, right, up, and down, you pitch and y'all. You've got to balance the truck, even at 10,000 pounds. Barefoot's crew, they are sweating BBs. They know what has to be done. He's got to get past this guy. Now he has to get past Colt Cobra to get a shot at Dan Runty. He needs points. He needs points in a big way. This is not a game of hand grenades. Close doesn't count. He's got to beat him on the other end of this track. It's getting close. You can feel the drama in the air. Just like any race, anytime you go somewhere, they roll into the lights. Schaefer goes in early. Normally he doesn't do that. Snake bite rolls in. This is going to be a war. Who's it going to be, Army? Ford, big time on the big end. Snake bite as the Dodge crew conversing now from crew to the truck. Uh, but Colt Cobra at a 508 will continue on. Fred Schaefer heads for the barn at 536. Well, we thought it was going to change. That's not to be the case. Ford still flexing his muscle tonight. Take a look again. Fred Schaefer coming right at you. Watch the front end of the truck. See, he powers up right here and, and keeps it up. He needs to get those front tires back down on the ground so they can pull him. Well, so once again, Fred Schaefer knocked out by this guy right here, Colt Cobra. Number with a 508, that's awfully good, but you knew you got to pull a good number to beat Fred. Yeah, Fred's really coming on with the with the Dodge people over there. Us and our Ford program, we're a privateer out here trying to make it. With the Ford backing us, we're out there running as fast as we can. We turn to 508. Hopefully that's good enough to stand up for lane choice going into the final against another Ford. I've heard of a guy selling their blood. Does a snake sell their venom for extra money? I don't know, but that guy has got blood in his eyes right now. <laughs> so now we have Chevrolet of Samson, Dan Patrick against Dan Runty's Ford. There is the Ford. Power Wheels Bigfoot. Runty, the new kid on the block, the Power Wheels Bigfoot, you say. You can buy a miniature of that in your local Kmart, Walmart, what have you. Samson truck, Dan Patrick in the other lane, has been around for many years. He's been here longer than the dirt they're running on, I believe. And he is instrumental in so many of the advances in the chassis of this truck, of this sport. But finally, he gets to race one of his own designs. I'll bet you Dan wins. All oh, right, I just figured that out. Okay, what brand, long, what brand is going to win? Uh, Ford. I say it's... Okay. <laughs> got you on that one. Well, one's a Chevrolet, one's a Ford. you got to be pulling for that one. All right, I'll take, I'll take Dan Runte in the Ford. Okay. All right. I'll take the rest of the field. <laughs> well, All right, they're, they're staged because the winner here goes to the championship against Colt Cobra. Dan Patrick is really working the lights, trying to psych that kid out on the far side. I don't believe he's going to do it. And I don't blame Patrick for doing it. Dan Runty knows he was going to do it. It's called mind games. But right now, it goes from mines to horsepower. You take it, Gary. And the horsepower belongs to the Ford. Runty takes it at a 516. 
5.16 for Ronte. And that is slower than Colt Cobra's time in his semifinal run. And there is Dan Patrick's 5.65. Okay, let's get back to our wager now. Patrick finished second in that race, and your guy was next to last, even though two Fords are going into the finals. <laughs> Well, yeah, right. if only two guys are running. Oh, well, that's the way the bet went down. The folks at home will verify, I win. Let me think about that for a moment. Well, anyway, we know that Dan Runty won. Let's go down and see what he has to say. Dan, I tell you what, the Chevrolet guys are trying to come after you all and pull you in. He's running good. You got to him. How close was it down there? It was real close, Army. I think the truck's really been working well. That time it kind of threw me for a loop between the first and second set of cars. Can't blame it on the truck. I really wasn't prepared for it. Um, I don't know what to say as far as going into the finals here. It's going to be rough. Been running in the left lane all night. Been running good times. But that one, I just kind of got a little squirrely in between the cars. We'll have to wait and see. And Colt Cobra will have lane selection for the championship. Go, hey, that youngster's getting ready for it. The Monster Truck Thunder Drags are part of the special events performance series, and like the Jamborees, they offer a weekend of four-wheel fun. Pick up the latest accessories at the manufacturer's midway or check out the show and shine competition. Contact the special events promotion company to find out when one of these events will be coming to your area. Well, the kids are ready. We're ready for the championship when we come back to Canfield. Welcome back to Canfield. Hey, you see a shot like this, you expect to hear the theme from the Honeymooners or perhaps Werewolves from London. Okay, let's play Honeymooners. Uh, Ralph and Alice, you're going to be in the uh, Bigfoot truck, and uh, Norton, you and Trixie over there in the snake truck. I don't think so. I don't think so. The Power Wheels Bigfoot will have Dan Ronte and Colt Cobra. Right there's Colt will be in snake bite. And uh, Cramdens and, and Trixie and the rest of the, the cast people, are yeah. not here. Both the trucks run 460 cubic inch engines. Both of them are blower drive services. Uh, supercharger on top. Uh, the trucks are very, very similar. It's going to get down to which driver can drive the truck. A lot of rivalry here, but then they get a lot of respect. As the Blue Oval Bunch is going to take another win on this Pinda Point Series, Gary. They have been dominating this year. Well, remember, in the semifinal round, Colt Cobra was actually faster than Dan Runty, so he gets lane choice. He takes the lane nearest us. And he is kind of flirting with disaster there because, well, not in the final, he's not, but there's a little down dip to the right side. But I guess he figures, hey, it's a final. Let's pull the trigger and go for this thing. Both drivers. Oh, a little bit. Ah, there you go, Gary. What he did, he burst the throttle left lane and spooked the driver in the far lane, made him back on the throttle. So he just flat out thought him on that one. That's no one. drag racing stunt, is it not? Yeah, exactly. You burp the throttle, make the other guy leave, then you stop. Then he stops and you go. Dan Runte got foxed on that one. Dan Runte, red lights, he's disqualified. Look again, watch the truck left side. Now watch him, he'll move, then the other guy will move, but he'll stop right there, and then he stops, boom. Runte, red lights, and Colt Cobra takes the victory. Army? You take them any way you can get them, but that that was sweet, isn't it? Yeah, it was. You know, Snake Bite's been running hard this year, and you know we came back. You know, last last weekend we got a win, come back hard and strong, and Snake Bite's in the finals and won, number one. But the lesson to be learned here is to watch the Christmas tree. Don't watch the guy next to you. Yeah, but the good Lord gives you something called peripheral vision. When something moves, you're going to move with it, too. You know, when thousands of second counts, that's what it's all about. It's kind of like a slide job in a race car. Now, the replay on the screen is going to show us real quick. Watch what happens. Burp, stop, go, stop, go. Now we've got a good race for it. Yeah, but it's all over right there. He won it right there, and here is your winner. I t I tell you what, Colt, I bet that guy's life passed in front of him when you burped that throttle and the light didn't re go red on him. Uh, I've been trying to play the lights. Lights are a big part of the racing here when it's this close. I, I thought it was going. I started to go and stopped, and I guess I brought my motor up. He went. I didn't know what happened to him, if he had broke or what, or if he was right behind me. Just stayed with it all the way down through there, and uh, looks like we came out with a win. Everybody here has been teasing us all night about our little puppy motor, but I guess the puppy's loose tonight. I tell you, the puppy was howling tonight. Congratulations. Thank you, Army. Well, with all the activity here this evening, Fred Schaefer falls back to fourth in the Penda Points standings. We'll take a look now as Andy Brass continues to lead, but closing in is Dan Runte. And Army Armstrong, I believe, has caught up with Dan Runte. 
Bigfoot Power Wheels went to the final, Gary, but a little bit of a burp. I don't mean a belch. I mean a horsepower burp. Cost you a little bit out there. Yeah, it sure did, Army. You know, we went out there and red-lighted. The truck was running excellent. Can't complain a bit about that. It was hooking up off the line. He threw us back in the lane we wanted to be in. He did a little burp. He got stopped. I did a burp, and I didn't. I guess that's what happens. Sounds like a dyed gel night. Some automotive indigestion there at the starting line. Our congratulations to Colt Cobra. For Army Armstrong, I'm Gary Lee. We'll see you next week on Trucks and Tractor Power. Now here's news of an exciting video release from Diamond P Sports. What could follow the three volumes of Diamond Peas and they walked away series? A fourth, and they walked away four like its predecessors captures the most perilous moments in recent motorsports history. Unmerciful doubles, unbelievable flips, falls, and fires, and in every harrowing incident, the driver beats the odds. Once again, man and machine test their metal through mayhem in over a dozen motorsports disciplines. You can't find this video in stores. You can't rent it. And anyone who has it won't let you beg, borrow, or steal it. Then how do you get your own copy of And They Walked Away for? Call 1-800-652-8686. Or send $24.95 plus $4 shipping and handling to the address on your screen. 1-800-652-8686. Or charge it on your Visa, MasterCard, or Discover card. Call 1-800-652-8686. 1-800-652-8686. Or charge it on your Visa, MasterCard, or Discover card.